even with my music. Go ahead. That, even with even with the people that I um like I because I, I make music also, right? Yes, and I saw that. I had to switch my whole style of making music because the music I was making before was kind of like it wasn't the right it wasn't the right message. So even when I switched to you know a more positive, more positive things. And I'll try to reach out to other artists and I'm like, yo, we could work, but the message got to be different. We got to talk about this. We can't talk about that. And that'll kill their whole mood. And they're like, okay, they will never hit me up after that. Dude, that, that is, I mean, you would think like, why would you want to talk about something that's positive, right? Because obviously you're like, we're trying to send out a good message, especially because like, of, you know, like our young ones, our kids. Exactly. The, our own self. You know the people we are in contact with, and I've seen that happen, bro. I've seen that happen because, and I'll, and I'll we'll go into that story in a bit. Mm -hmm. But before we go further, let okay. me introduce today's guest. I'm gonna call you Jump Out Low, right? Because that's the yep. way I know jump you. Out low. you call jump, me out, jump Out Low. That's jump fine. Out Low. You're from New Jersey. Yeah, I'm from Patterson, I saw this. New Jersey. And welcome everybody to the Infinite Talks podcast. Is this, the frequencies are real right now? They're good. They're they're energetic. They're pop. Positive, which I and um, I brought on Jump Out Low because on um, when I was on TikTok, I was like, you know how your feed just gives you like certain uh, you know algorithms, and mm -hmm. I, I've been tuning into just positive stuff. And then you came on, I was like, wait, this is this guy is touching on everything that I've always talking about, and I haven't heard anybody say it like the way you did. So especially because it caught me off guard. I was like, wait, I, I've been that's the frequency i need to listen to and i went into your page and everything was positive 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 i was like wow i need to you know that's my my goal for 2023 was to reach out to po as many positive people and, and just share the frequencies you know because i've been doing this podcast for a few years and now i'm like i need to take it to the next level you know i need to meet with people that are like-minded sharing great ideas and keeping us all a check man because at the end of the day we all make mistakes we're not perfect but I feel like Absolutely. by keeping those people around you, you're able to make the right decisions. So without further ado, we have Mr. Jump Out Low. What's your real name, brother? Or if you don't want to share it, it's okay. Oh, my, my real name is Louis. 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 Yes, Louis. I'm Luis. Dominican. Yeah, I'm Dominican. I was going to say Dominican, bro. That's badass. Badass, man. Yeah. That's good. And you're, you've been in New Jersey for a while then? Yeah, for almost cl close to 30 years. I came from Dominican Republic when I was like seven. I'm 35. Wow, man. Great, great, man. And you've been in Jersey this whole time? Yeah, I've been in Jersey ever since. Yep. Wow, man. So you said you make music, and we were talking about how you went from wanting to make music for just to make music. I'm pretty sure like what you were here, like well, all the influences you had, and um, you wanted to keep on that same vibe, but then you kind of realize that this is, it wasn't feeling right. Or what happened for you? Like, how did, how did that right. whole thing evolve? First of all, I started making music, um, cause one of my close friends got killed, uh, in 2015, um, one of my, a good friend of mine, he was, he got killed. Uh, he was in the streets and, um, he got killed. Right. So one of our last conversations, he was, he used to tell me, cause I, I used to smoke and, um, he'll tell me every time we used to smoke, I'll start rapping. And he always tell me like, yo, bro, we got to get you into the studio. We got to get you. In. Like that was, that was one of our last conversations. Him telling me, yo, we got to get you into the studio. The day he died, I was in the studio recording my first song. No way, bro. Yeah. The day he died, I was recording my first yeah. song. So I took it as a sign from God that, that the universe, was not the right. this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. So I started making music, you know, as I'm making music, though, I I started to change. Like, I saw that how he ended up. I didn't want that to happen to me. So I, I kind of started separating myself little by little. But the music I was making, um, let me let me let me backtrack a little bit. Right. So I started meeting people like like minded people little by little. So I met this this guy at the, at the studio. He had just started this nonprofit. It's called the Unity Foundation. And. I, I, for some reason, my heart just told me, yo, hit him up and, and just tell him, like, you like what he's doing and you want to be a part of it. So I hit him up and I said, yo, man, Jordan, I like what you're doing. I want to be a part of what you're doing. So one day led to the next and he invited me to um, to speak at a high school. 
And once I spoke at that high school, everything started changing for me. I no longer wanted to make music that glorified violence. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm here speaking to kids. I look crazy going back and rapping about the things that destroying our, our communities. So I'm not gonna say it was an easy trans transition. It took me years, you know what I mean? For me just trying to change. I was one foot in, one foot out. And it's funny because my mom used to always tell me, she said, you got to serve one God. You can't be here and be here. You got to pick his side. And I never used to understand what she meant by that. So fast forward to now, well, yeah, I had to change, I had to change my music. So little by little, I kept throwing little messages in my music to the point that it got that. I was like, you know what? I don't want to rap about this at all. I don't want to rap about this at all. I want to change. So I'll say 2020. That's when I, I made my first album that was completely more positive vibes. I even went I even went as far as I took video down from my channel that I just didn't want to I, I didn't want to make it that way. You know, I didn't want to promote that anymore. So I, I, I just did a whole cleanse, brother, because it's like I can't keep rapping about the things that got my my friend killed and glorify it and make it fun. And on top of that, um, in the course of this. Like from 2012 to 2017, I went through a, a perk addiction. I was addicted to Percocets. Wow. So, yeah, it was it was rough, man. I had a rough five years where, you know, I, I used to take about 12 to 15 pills a day just to feel regular. So I was battling perk addiction, and I just wanted better for me. I, I, I lost friends to, to overdoses as well, and I did not want to die. And that was, like, my motive to just change. I just kept saying to myself, like, God, I don't want to die to this. I don't want to die. How can I change? And little by little, he just be removed. And I just kept getting more enlightened. The more, like the more things I cut off from my life that were destroying me, it's like the more discernment I kept getting up. Like I kept getting set free. Every time I cut like a bad habit, I just get more more wisdom. Then I started. Get, I got into reading. I started reading books. I got into um like the the four agreements. I got into um, the, the power of now. I was reading books that was just keeping me and my mind sharp. And I just started looking at life from a whole different perspective. And then um, when I started doing the podcasting, I had I had a couple guys, a couple friends of mine, they were doing a podcast and I would just go to their house and just sit in with them. So, you want to you get, get in the episode, get an episode. I'll get a response from like from their viewers. Like, yo, who's that guy? Yo, he says some interesting, some interesting, interesting things. Who is he? So one of my friends, he came up with the idea. He said, yo, man, um, I want to give you a segment called Check Your Mental so you could talk about your experiences and the things that you went through. So that that kicked off around 20, 2020. I think it was like during the pandemic or even 2021, I think it kicked off. No, 2021, that's when it kicked off. Oh, we we'll check your mental. It was right after the like the whole shutdown, and next thing you know, I just felt like, yo, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. Aside from the music, because I will always love music, I feel like I'm supposed to spread awareness. I'm supposed to spread whatever I learn. I'm supposed to pass it on because I can't keep it to myself. You know what I mean? I just gotta tell people that, yo, it's a beautiful thing when you when you live life differently. Like it's okay to do the right thing. You know, bro. Well, that's amazing. Like you give me like a synopsis of the journey, but I know in between all those experiences, you've had a lot of you know change of path. You know, from just become coming from you know from where you were from, you know, Dominican Republic, right? To mm -hmm. come in to the states, that's the first journey, and then you your trajectory changes because if you would have stayed over there, it would have been a totally different story. The second trajectory is like you're living in Jersey, you're coming up in the in the hood, I believe, right? And then the, all of these are influences are happening for you. You start getting influence influence to actually be an artist, record. That's a calling for you, but then your homie passes away, your best friend, and I was like, on the day of your first recording, that's that's like super frequent, like frequency, like it's just. It, it's a rare moment. And that's why you described it so clearly. And then you keep on going forward and you start noticing that 
the energy you're spreading is not really about love. No, it isn't. Yep. And when, but, but the, the good thing about going through that journey is that you're able to reflect and be like, you know what, man, this is not right. But sometimes when we're in that journey and I can relate a little bit about that because at one point and back in 2020, I'm 44 years old, brother. <laughs> when I was in 20, I mean, not in 2020, in 2000, 23 years ago, I was in the journey of like, I wanted to be a producer, a rapper, an artist, you know, I wanted to be in the entertainment, but I, I reflect on that, bro. And when I was in that journey, I was not, I was seeing what you were seeing, bro. I was like, this is, how am I going to spread any good energy? Because I come from a very Catholic background, spiritual background. So when I started putting the, the pieces together, it just didn't make sense to me to keep on going in that route. Not only that, but there's other spiritual stuff that happens between that connection to the next level, right? Absolutely. I'm pretty, sure you, I'm pretty sure you can relate when you're in that realm trying to follow that lead, but then you're like, you know, let me break off from that wing. Let me go this way. Let me make my mark by being real to, to the truth and then being able to, like, catch these doors and opportunities where, like, wait, the books, the friends, the surroundings, the people giving you feedback that they like your message. And then now, 2023, bro, like, it's been a journey within, but you're pretty sure, like, it's a blur, but it's, like, all beautiful. And now you're looking back, it's like, wow, man, I'm actually... I'm actually doing something that I really, I know that I love that I'm doing. And I, when I see your energy, especially there on, on the TikTok videos you share, bro, I was like, the message is pure and you're speaking to everyone, bro. You're speaking to like anybody who can listen to you and be like, man, they can relate to a lot of the stuff you're talking about. So tell us more about what, what, uh, I mean, yeah, you were in the podcast. So now you have your own podcast. Is that the, is that what's um, going on right now? like a show mini vlog i wouldn't even call it a podcast it's mostly like a mini vlog series like a like a small show it's on youtube it comes out i do episodes mondays and fridays and it's no longer than 10 minutes you know i try to keep it short but i want the message to stick because me personally i'm the type of person that you know um sometimes attention span my mind is all over mm -hmm. the place I don't know if you could give me a short sweet message it'll resonate with me more so i kind of became like you know what let me do the same format that i would like just give you points so even when i'm breaking down my my when i break down like the things that i'm gonna post with tiktok um i break it down and get the main parts that's gonna stick to people like you know what people need to hear this part specifically you know what I mean? It's crazy about how I got into TikTok because I have a bigger following on Instagram, but they do not support me. And my TikTok is complete strangers, meaning I every single person that follows me on TikTok, I maybe know five that know me. Then the rest are complete strangers. And that's the beauty of this journey. Your tribe is going to find you. You don't have to look for it. 100%. They're going to find you. It's like when you're putting that message and that word out, people are going to find you. And it's like I said, I was talking to my friend about just how I need to connect with other like-minded individuals. And you hit me up. She said, yo, you're fast. She hit me up today and told me that. I was like, yo, I got I to gotta go in the interview for the podcast. She's like, yo, you're fat. So you don't even know how fast you are. And I'm like, <laughs> I have to start being more positive because people underestimate the power of the tongue. And that's the re that's another reason why my the music, the music, the, the your words are so powerful. People Bro. don't understand. You can speak life or death into people. You can speak uh -huh. life or death into situations. And if you don't change what you say, if you always say, you know what, I'm going to have a bad day today, or, then you might just have a bad day. You, you spoke that into existence. You gave those words to the universe. So, but if you wake up, listen to some affirmations and say, to you, you know what, it's going to be a great day today. Regardless of everything is going to be a lesson. Whatever I go through today is a lesson. Even if I don't like it, I'm going to understand it tomorrow. A hundred percent. Bro, when I started understanding the power of the tongue, I practice, I reworded every single, th a lot of my thoughts, a lot of my thoughts, like when you say, like the, the typical like um, phrases that we say, like, hey, break a leg, you know, like even that, like, hey, don't even say break a leg, like, hey, dig, do great, do your best, you know, instead of saying break a leg, um, hey, watch out because you're going to fall. 
just by saying that, you're already putting in the frequency that you're going to fall. Fault. Instead of saying, hey, be careful when you walk through that ledge. You know, you're walking carefully. Mm -hmm. um, so I started rewording a lot of the stuff that I was programmed to say. So I've been working on that. It's an ongoing process because there's a lot of downloads that we had as kids and we're still working through that, you know, deprogramming and programming ourselves with the right energy. Absolutely. I also went to, I also did a lot of meditation. I see your shirt, brother. Yeah. I actually, I actually was like, you know what? Let me throw my favorite, this is one of my favorite shirts to wear. So I'm like, I got to wear this shirt. This is my favorite shirt. <laughs> no, no. Tell me, tell me more about the meditation experience. Cause I'm pretty sure you've, you've gone through that. Um, right. I thought I was doing it wrong. You know, I would just, sometimes I just close my eyes and just started taking deep breaths, but I noticed how calm I would get, like everything a pause. It's like, it's like a time lapse or something that like, you just feel in complete peace. And then it's like, sometimes you'll open your eyes and you're like, yo, you look at the time and you know, your 30 minutes just passed and you don't even realize that you were in that, it was, you was like in a deep meditation state and it's just like a beautiful thing. I just started the whole meditation journey maybe about a year, a year, like a year ago. And that was on through listening to them to, to Joe Dispenza. Dude, for real. You're in the same, <laughs> your same power, brother. Same yeah. frequency. Uh -huh. I listened to Joe Dispenza. He, he actually helped me stop smoking because he said one thing that just stuck to me forever. Because I, I used to be smoke, I used to, I used to smoke weed a lot. And I wanted to stop because I wasn't using it for anything else but to run away from my feelings and he said something he said your brain is very powerful he said your body has the urges he said but your brain controls your body urges you can't let the body overpower the brain and he said that and it's like a light bulb just clicked in my head i'm like yo my brain controls everything how can i let my body urges overpower my brain and ever since that i just gave it up bro <laughs> <laughs> wow Man, we're meditation, right? So you were talking about that, and Joe Dispenza got you into it. Yeah, I'm not gonna believe the way I got into it, man. Let me tell you the story. In 2012, bro, the latter part of 2012, we I actually bought a, a house and we had moved there. So the first few days, I was just alone because my 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 wife and my daughter were still at the other house with my mom. They were living in my mom's house, and I was cleaning the house, so I would stay there by myself the first three days. I think it was. And I was listening just to hip hop music on YouTube. And um, I don't know if you know, but I'm pretty sure you know about the Beast Coast, right? The who? The Beast Coast? No? Flatbush Zombies, um, Underachievers, okay, pro, okay. pro Era. They came on my feed on YouTube, so I, I didn't know too much about them at all. So, But I was like, the music is cool. Joey Badass came, came out, and then Capital okay. Steez came out. I was like, man, let me let me check them out. Like, so I started listening to more of their music, and all that group, all those groups. If you listen to the Underachievers, they're from Brooklyn, Flatbush, um, Joey Badass. They're all from that same hood, Flatbush, and the Flatbush Zombies as well. They okay. were all talking about meditation and chakras. I'm like, what the hell? I knew my grandma had mentioned some of that to me. Like, my grandma was into that, bro. Like, she would tell me, like, hey, there's chakras, there's energies, there's a uh, healing through the hands, and my grandma had already programmed me about it. But I hadn't heard it from somebody else. So when you know when your grandma's tell you something, you're like, see, grandma, whatever. You know, like, yeah, see, see, see. But when you start hearing it from other people that are maybe your age, you start listening like, hey, what? So they were talking about chakras and meditation, especially Capital Steez, rest in peace. He died in 2012, right after I found out about him. So I started looking into his music and his, and I was like, you need, I need to go into meditation. I need to study this. So I started studying meditation. Uh, and this is like, like you said, I, I was just, going with the frequencies i was going on youtube putting um just uh the chakra chakra cleansing Same here. chakra balancing <laughs> if you go to eric bartell eric bartell nah it's just I'm, whatever i'm gonna put you on bro i'm gonna put you on this is incredible stuff bro i had just gone back to college bro and um it was uh i had gone back to college to get my communication disorders degree mm -hmm. and i would put the frequency music just pure tones the chakra cleansing while I was reading the material, bro. It was like studying on steroids. I was learning this, all these new topics, all these new uh, information. And I was able to pass my test like nothing. And the teachers were like, what are you doing? Like you're getting hundreds. Like I had never done that though. I was not a good student growing up, bro. So like 
to me, that was a new experience. But I was using it to meditate. And when I was meditating, bro, I was able to get calm. You know, I was able to go into this trance. And when I was going into the trance, I could see, like, my, my decision-making getting a lot better. And I can even see, like, glimpses of what was going to happen, the few, like, within that next days. It was weird. Like, I was like, man, this kind of, like, time travel, bro. <laughs> like, no no lie, bro. I don't know if you ever got into that. But for me, that's my experience. How to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put you on, bro. And the, the Eric Bartel frequencies, you'll be like, wow, what's going on? Like, this, this is beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. So... You started doing meditation. Did the reading books come before, right? Reading the books. The reading books definitely came before. Uh, who I forgot. I think it was around the time um, Nipsey died. Wow. You know, Nipsey Hustle died, and I something about his life. I just became infatuated with his life, and um, I just started seeing the things that he was doing. And there was like a couple books that he mentioned that he read. So. I went and bought a couple books and then it just became an addiction. And then people will recommend books. And then like that, like you said, the frequency, people do the type of things that I'll be talking about. And they'll get, yo, you should read this book. Yo, you should read this book. And then I, I believe the, the, the one book that I'll say that it was like the power of now, that book was a game changer. The power of now, because it says something that I always remember. And it was, he said, um, we can't live in the past or think too much about the future. We have to stay in the present moment. He said, in the present the moment, problems don't really exist. Right now, this very moment, me and you are having a conversation. Nothing is happening. Now, we start thinking about the past or we start thinking about the start. That's when the depression starts. That's when everything starts. So it's like sometimes, and don't get me wrong, sometimes I got to practice more of what I preach because I can exactly. give you a great advice. Sometimes to, to take that on advice, it could be a little hard. But I can catch myself sometimes. Like, Yo, man, stay, take some deep breaths. Right now, nothing's wrong. You're thinking about something in the future that's not even that's not even here yet. So yeah, definitely the books came first. The books, um, I, I hated to read. I was Bro, one of those people that same here, same here to read. I I thought it was boring. I thought it was useless. I'm like, no, I was like one of them kids that thought I knew it all and I know nothing. So reading opened my mind and even to just thinking different, you know, even to seeing different, even just then I read a book like the positive and it was like just rewiring because we're wired to automatically think the worst. We never like to, never say to ourselves, like, hold on, even like for example, let's say you're in traffic, somebody cuts you off, you automatically think I'm about to curse them out. I'm about to, but you ever sit that if you just stopped, even if this is not the right scenario, you could say to yourself, maybe he's late, he gotta pick up his kid, he don't got money to he don't got money for the babysitter, so he's just having a bad day today. It's not about me. And it's like when you step out of your body and be like, you know what? The world doesn't revolve around you. And it changes how you view everything because you you it's like you gain a sense of compassion towards everybody. And another book that was um, a very important book for me was um, The Four Agreements by um, Don Miguel Ruiz. All his books are great. But it's like, it was something that he said in his books that about unconditional love, right? Meaning is like loving people of condition because once you, if, oh, I'm only going to love you if you do this, you condition to their love. And it's like if you pull up everybody unconditionally, it frees you because you're not expecting anything from anybody. You're just doing it out of pure the kindness of your heart. So it's like reading, reading definitely first. And then I had to um I'm a YouTube fanatic. You know what I'm saying? I YouTube is like my college. So I kept hearing people tell me about meditation, like, yo, you should meditate, you should meditate. But I always thought I was doing it wrong. To this day, sometimes I still think I'm doing it wrong. But sometimes I, I know I must have did something right because I get so, I wake up and I'm like, yo, 30 minutes just passed. I had to be doing it right. And I'm so relaxed. I'm like, yo, I did something because I, I feel different right now. Bro, I had a meditation earlier today in the morning and it was supposed to be a 10 minute. I was like 10 minutes and that's it. It was like 25 to 30 minutes, bro. Like you said, like you just lose track of time. It's like a, you're in some, you're just in a safe place. Your mind is 
I'm not racing anymore. Everything slows down. You can actually focus on a thought and like really see it out. And then that's what I love, man, because I start like doing like little mantras and stuff like that, you know, and just making sure that the frequencies are right around me for my family, my home and my day. And then it, and it goes into this from there. And then it starts meditation into like this just open space of, of peace. So, yeah, man, time can fly real quick. And in regards to those two books, I need to get those two books. I've heard those people, a lot of people telling me about those two books. Excuse me. The Four Agreements, I've heard it from a lot of people. And also the the one you just said, The Power of Now. Mm-hmm. I've never read those two books. But The Power of Now is something that I've understood for a while. I started saying a while back, the time is now. The time is always now. <laughs> and when I started understanding that concept, I was like, wow, like right now it matters. Like what's around me, being present, being able to be like there for somebody who needs to hear me or somebody that I need to hear or somebody that I need to be, you know, or a situation that comes around about, but if you're in the right state of mind and you're in the now, everything is a lot easier because you're not, you're you're not, um, you're filtering out all the positive or the negative vibes that you might've had from previous times. Or you're like, you said, you're not thinking about the future, but you're worrying about that specific moment and you're able to absorb it in whatever light it might come, you know, because, we all go through different situations in life, but whatever you're going through at that moment, you can actually achieve it and see it like they like see it right. So look, Absolutely. the in the back, you're talking about love. And before I let you look, bro, in the back, if you see this right here, mm-hmm. the, e, the background is is a frequency and, it's, it, and yeah. it's my homie sketch. He's an artist. He designed it for me and I told him, look, man, I'm gonna record the word love. And you're gonna make me a, a logo with that, yeah. Oh. So, so that means love. That frequency in the back means love. And then he put the E for my name, Eric. But oh. yeah, man. So like you said, it's it's very true. Like when you have unconditional love for any situation that you're going through, it makes life so much easier. Um, like you said, you have situations where like somebody's going through some hardship, like and they're like in your face in another dimension world like they're going through stress and you don't know what's going on in their in their world but if you're able to be in like you know just let me just relax and let me see what's going to happen with them because they might be going through something i don't even know so if you show them love and compassion you know it just makes the situation a lot better Absolutely. and but another thing about this journey that i had to that i found this the hard way not everybody's going to gravitate to what you have to say and you have to be okay with that. And you also have to be okay to be alone. A lot of times you're going to be alone because that was one of my things. I would still go around people that they were still feeding into gossip. You know, just everything was negative. Everything that you said was negative. That I just had to learn to love from a distance. Yeah. I had That was a hard thing for me to do, you know, because... When you grow up in the hood, you grow up with this loyalty that this 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 street mentality that you know I have to be loyal to the core, and that loyalty ties you to is 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 not beneficial for you. So you have to be okay with letting go, but just know when you let go, those people are gonna be replaced because once you put that energy out, the people that are just like you and that they want to spread that message, they're all gonna come together as one. So that like you gotta be. You got to understand that you're going to be alone. You're going to be misunderstood. Some people might even label you crazy, <laughs> but you have to be okay. You have to be, you have to be able to be so comfortable with you, with yourself that you don't mind. No, nothing that people say just bounces off because you know who you are. Once you know who you are, can nothing nobody says even bother you. We're humans. Something, you know, some things might they be like, no, I know who I am. You're trying to get me off my frequency. You're trying to get me off my pivot. I know who I am as a person. I'm going to still be, I'm going to still be good. Regardless of how you might be having a bad day, you might be blaming life for whatever you're going through. But I'm here to tell you, man, it's not my fault. And I love you anyway. You know what I mean? It's like, I had to learn, bro. And that was so hard because I felt like I was letting people down. And it's like, no, you're letting yourself down. You're letting yourself down. And you, you, if you stay in situations that are no longer serving you, you're letting yourself down and you're not living to your fullest potential. 
because it's like I'm telling you, once you leave those negative areas, you're going to keep rising and you're going to just keep seeing more things that you like. For example, I never would have said I never in my life would have thought that I'll be I'll stop listening to certain artists. People that I, I grew I never in my life would have thought. <laughs> I'm I there, bro. I'm totally there, bro. I'm right there. I never, you. Where until you, I'm like, yo, now it's like I hear it on your track off, bro. Like they're not talking about nothing. They they just like dude, I don't want to hear that right now. And it's I never in my life, yo. I'm 35 years old. I never in my life would have thought that I'd be this person that I am today. I thought that the streets was everything for me. Bro, I can't I, listen. I, I can't listen to Three Six Mafia. <laughs> and, and I grew up on this. Bro, and I'm I, I'm telling I, you, I bought their albums. I told my kids, look, I was crazy one time. I bought this album, I was showing the actual CD case. I'm like, I don't need this. I'm gonna throw it away. They're like, Dad, why'd you buy that? I was like, cause I was I was stupid. I was programmed. Like thought that was that was cool, man. Program. 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 And and honestly, like bro, this. you were saying a key key uh message right now about sometimes people are not gonna hear you and they're not ready to hear you. And if they might right. hear you, they're not ready. But at the same time, you we have to like be like, you know what? Everybody's gonna have their wake up call. Either you have it early in life when you're a kid and you just see things differently and you're able to absorb a lot of things at a very young age and you you open your third eye you open your mind and it could be like a three or four or five six year old but you have that or it happens the day you die the day you're gonna die you're like man i did everything wrong you know what I mean? but you have those life moments like what happened to us where we're like wait we feel something we can change it right now we've been just like this little mind slave and now we can actually emancipate ourselves like the way Bob Marty said absolutely and then like actually think for ourselves and be like you know what this is not as cool as they painted the picture man we actually have to make this better for us and we've been able to do that I know that we're on our journey still but I feel like you've done a great way man just just the wave you have right now is amazing I want to be part of that wave um I have a lot of guests coming up this year I, my my plan with the 23 is going to be impactful man impactful and already I'm seeing I'm So yeah, man. What, what I know we have about three minutes. So and I know I'm trying to keep it, you know, I know your time is valuable. So tell us Nah, listen. Yo. I'm it's whatever. I like how this is going, so I just let I'm flowing with it. All right. So if you want to keep it like that, wanna keep it like going. <laughs> I have the Zoom meetings, but the Zoom meetings only ends at forty minutes. And uh after that, we can do a separate a segment. We can still continue to record after that. But I would just have to oh, we, read. So if, if inconvenient, we'll do a part two some other time and continue no, with that. Let's do it right now. If you're if you're good, I'm good. No, I'm good too. And then let's do another another fifteen minutes. I guess twenty minutes, whatever time. Because this is infinite talks, bro. There's no time limit. And I, okay. when I have when I have talks with people, sometimes talks. Like my, my my wife gets mad at me. Like, why do you know everybody? I'm like, it's not it's not that I know everybody, but when I come into contact with someone and I'm talking to them, they we just gravitate to that flow of conversation, and then we're having these talks. And <laughs> I named my I was like when I was starting, I was thinking about my podcast. What do I name it, man? I was like, I like the word infinite because we're infinite souls, infinite beings, infinite talks. I like to talk forever, you know. <laughs> Let me just keep it like that. Infinite talks, man. Infinite talks with Eric Castillo. So, yes, man. So, I guess what we can do right now is like pause this and keep on recording. So, just log okay. log back log back in. So, I'm just gonna uh, stop this right here, and then we can stop. Or, I mean, continue with the recording afterwards. Okay. So, just let me end it real quick, and then start it again. Okay. <laughs>